And so, unless you're willing to attribute religious sentiment to the chimpanzees, which I think you could to some degree, by the way. How, how the, can we make that jump for a chimpanzee? Well, because the precursors to religious belief are in place. So, for example, animals organize themselves into a hierarchy. You could call it a dominance hierarchy, but it's, it's not exactly the right way to conceptualize it because dominance sounds like power, right? And, and that's sort of the social justice warrior, postmodernist claim that all hierarchies are based on power. Mm -hmm. But Franz de Waal, who's a, a, a Dutch anthropologist who studied chimps for a long time, has noted that the brutal chimp dictatorship tends to be unstable and end in a very violent, mean right. manner. Well, so if you're a brutal chimp leader, and you're always t tormenting everyone, and you don't do any reciprocal grooming, and you don't have any friends, then one day, two chimps who are nicely bonded together, three quarters your size, wait and ambush you and tear you into pieces. Yeah. And so one of the things DeWall has noted is that the, the, the stable chimpanzee troops tend to have a leader that's quite pro-social. A lot of friends, a lot of social bonds, a lot of mutual grooming. And so you could see even there, imagine that Imagine that there are sets of hierarchies among chimpanzees, mm -hmm. and there are different principles of leadership at the top. Then you could imagine a competition across time. Which principle of leadership is going to produce the most stable and functional chimpanzee hierarchy? Well, that is exactly what does happen. And yeah. so there's, there's, some, there's some shape that the top of the hierarchy starts to, to take, and you could think about that as the beginnings of an ideal, right? And then. It's even more complicated than that, because let's say you get a stable hierarchy set up, and then this is what happens in human beings. It doesn't happen in chimps, or it does, but only to a limited degree. You get a stable hierarchy set up, and then there's some pattern of behavior that emerges that's, that reliably moves men to the top of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, They leave more offspring. So what happens is that the male dominance hierarchy, the male hierarchy, forget about dominance, the male hierarchy becomes a selection mechanism. It promotes men to the upper ranks, and then the women peel off the top, because we know that human females do that, chimpanzee females don't, they're promiscuous maters. The dominant males are more likely to mate with the females, but that's because they chase the subordinates away. It's not because the females are choosy. So the reason I'm telling you this, it's, it's really important, because yeah. imagine that there's a reliable pattern of behavior that will move you up a male hierarchy across time. Mm -hmm. Well, what that means is that men over time have become biologically adapted to that pattern. The hierarchy is there, it's stable, it exists across millions of years. And so it acts as a selection mechanism by promoting men. And so the men who have the genes that are most likely to get them promoted, put those genes forward. And so we get more like the group ideal as we progress through time, both mm -hmm. biologically and culturally. And we, then we also start to articulate that group ideal. And that's partly what a religion does when, it, when it's coming up with the idea of an ideal. So I was listing some of the... And I've been wrestling with this idea because I'm going to give some biblical lectures starting in, on May 16th. And so I've been starting to think about conceptualizations of God, for example. And one of the things that's very interesting about the Old Testament is that there's a, there's a distinction made between countries that rule by the ruler, mm -hmm. who's God, and countries that are ruled by God, who's not the ruler. Okay, so strip it for a minute of its religious language and imagine this instead. Imagine that what we consider God is the abstraction of the ideal by which people have to orient themselves to produce a functional society. It's an abstraction, right? right? So it's just sort of the, the basic underlying truth of how we are able to function as a group of people. Yes, properly. And you can't identify it with any one person because mm -hmm. when you identify it with a the person, then the system then, gets corrupted because mm -hmm. the person gets inflated, let's say. This would be like the Pharaoh, basically. Yes, in, exactly in, like, yeah. precisely like that. that okay. That's exactly the, that, that's the canonical story in the Old Testament. Yeah. Is the Pharaoh is the earthly ruler who demands everything that you should provide to God. Mm -hmm. well, what's God? Well, we'll, we we'll, can speak about it from an evolutionary psychology perspective. God is the idea of the abstract ideal. And you separate it out from, from the actual ruler, just like in, 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 in our society. The idea of sovereignty is 
abstracted from the president, right? The president comes and goes. The sovereignty of the president remains. The sovereignty of the president is a very abstract idea because it's disembodied, right? It's disembodied. Now, how we were chimps, for God's sake. How long do you think it took us to figure out how to disembody the idea of sovereignty from the individual? Man, it was like, well, it was, it was maybe up until, a, maybe it took us till 150,000 years ago to start, to start formulating that, you know, in, in some articulated way, in some mm -hmm. abstract way. I think we could recognize it before then. And the way you recognize it is through admiration, right? If you meet someone that you admire, there's someone you want to imitate. And what it is, imagine this pattern that will move you up the hierarchy. And then you see people who manifest different elements of it. And you see someone who manifests an element that you don't have, and something in you responds to that with, with admiration. It's unconscious, right? Because it pulls mm -hmm. you towards them. It's not voluntary. You see that really with kids a lot, when they, when they hero worship someone and start to imitate them. Right. You know, but, but the same thing happens throughout culture. I mean, yeah. 